All right, guys, welcome back to Hood's Custom Shop. So today I want to get something done on the bus. There's a few issues with the bus. Uh, one of them is it keeps losing prime on the fuel system, so it won't start. So check this out. Another problem is the dash cluster here is not working. And we have what looks to be a gauge possibly missing right here. I, I'm not sure if there's even supposed to be one there, but yeah, uh, this is not working. So check this out. You turn it on, it should be doing all kinds of crazy stuff right now, doing all of its reset and everything. It's not doing that. We'll wait for the glow plug light to go off and then screwdriver here looks kind of like it's probably just a couple of screws holding this thing in so we're gonna remove these Phillips head screws right out of here get this thing taken out make sure you put these somewhere where you're not gonna lose them like we've got some airline fittings uh, hooked up on the back right here for the the air gauge that's going to uh, hinder me from getting this thing out of here I think probably I'm just gonna have to undo those right there like they are that's probably a 9 16 it looks like I got a 916 here. Let's see if that fits. It. Yep, that fits. All right, so red is on the left and green is on the right. I don't know that that really matters which one goes where, but it might. So. And I do have air in there, <laughs> so it's going to be hissing out. Let me go let the air out of the air tank so that doesn't just like 
real bad, okay? I'll be right back. Still got air in it. That's not too bad. Alright, so... I don't know how to get this thing out of here. <laughs> um, to reach back around here to the back side and get the electrical plugs unplugged from it. Uh, it looks like there's two more. It's not super easy to get to. And I don't know if you're supposed to drop your steering column down or even if that's even possible. But I think if I get this, this one right here unplugged, the green one, that's the main one. That's the one we're probably having trouble with. Um, is that gun? How do you get this out? If I can get my arm, my hand in there, that's the problem. Just get in there and it's just got a little tab on it. I got it. Uh, you just pinch that tab. There you go. And then she comes out just like that. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> All right. So, got the uh, instrument cluster out, guys. Um, all right, so from my research, this right here is the main plug-in. And this goes to the center uh what do you call it circuit board right here so you got a circuit board over here one in the middle and one on this side all right so this since i have air brakes on this one we have the airline hookup on here and those are just let me show you guys here all right so this is what it looks like behind the dash you have this little uh plug here and that's going to run your oil pressure and your water temp then you have the green plug right here and that's going to run your rpm your miles per hour and your miles and it'll also have your hour meter if you have one of those on here on yours all right then you got this yellowish kind of clear color plug and that's going to run uh, your fuel gauge and your volts and possibly I think it provides power or a light for your air pressure right here so there's that right there these right here you twist these and remove that's gonna have your light bulbs in them if you got this uh, gauge cluster out I recommend that you go ahead and change that out but anyways let's get this over on the table and take a look at it all right guys hopefully everything is in frame uh, with the camera hopefully you can see what we got going on here so here's the instrument cluster right here uh, this is a 2001 international 3800 school bus uh, it's like 40 foot long or 38 foot long something like that the instrument cluster is not working um, looking here the warranty void if removed sticker has not been removed, so no one's even messed with this thing. Uh, I'm going to disregard that because there's no warranty on this baby. <laughs> Anyways, so what we need to do is start removing some of these screws. We're gonna take this metal uh, little protector plate off of here. This metal plate basically uh, helps ensure that uh, things do not make contact with the circuit board here. So let's uh, take the screws out for that. And I've got a little cup here to put my screws in so I don't lose the screws. Let's see, there's one here. I wish they would just pop out of there. Let's see if I can get this one. I have my soldering iron also already plugged in and I've got some electronics I got some electronics solder right here 
and let's see. All right, so here's another screw here. And one here. <clears throat> that, oh, that one here. I wish my chair set up a little bit higher so I could get a better look. All right, I think that's all of the screws. Yep, I'm pretty sure it is. Still hanging up on something here. What is it? Oh, I think there's, must be one underneath the sticker right here. That's the one that, oh yeah, I got one hidden underneath there. Just be very gentle with everything. Uh, when you're working on something like this right here, you do not want to break that circuit board and cost yourself a bunch of money. This is actually a fix that you can do pretty cheaply if you already have a soldering iron and some solder. All right, so now you can see the whole circuit board here. Uh, we've got a screw right here, one over here, and I believe that should be it. I'm gonna look around, make sure there's no other uh, screws holding it in, but I'm pretty sure that's it. So we're gonna remove these two screws here. They look like they're exactly the same as all the other ones I've been taking out. So we'll just go ahead and mix it in there. Always be mindful of that when you're taking something like this apart of different length screws and stuff like that. Keep them separate. And if you have to, put them in little baggies or something to, you know, in case you would forget, which I always do. <laughs> so it helps if I just have little sandwich bags, uh, Ziploc bags, and I can take a Sharpie and write on there, um, you know, where it it came from uh, what it went to so now we need to remove this circuit board and we got these little pins right here around each one of these uh, these gauge clusters okay or, or the gauges this is where the gauges plug in into these little pin pieces right here be very careful that you do not break your circuit board so we're going to nice and gently start prying up on this you can probably stick your finger through uh, the hole there you could use a pick like this right here again just be careful not to damage anything if your fingers are too fat like mine they don't want to fit through that hole <laughs> uh, but we're just gonna gently pull up and remove this and you just make sure you don't break nothing all right there we go all right so we have this little plug in here for the uh, odometer. I do not have an hour meter. This is where the hour meter will plug in right here. You can actually read it right there. It'd be upside down for you guys, but it says hour meter right there. And over here underneath this plug, it says odometer. So pretty cool that they write that stuff on there, right? All right. So we unplug that. We'll fish it through that little hole there. All right. Now we got it off here. So let me look at this real quick. Oh yeah, that is, that's terrible. That is just terrible, terrible. All right, so right here, if we had a magnifying glass, we could show you guys, but there's gonna be uh, like hairline fractures on these and that's usually the problem. All right, so we're hoping that that's the issue here. I'm gonna go over this, uh, looking at it real close and everything and we're gonna wipe this stuff off a little bit, clean it up, and we're gonna solder, uh, re-solder this stuff here. So let's get after it. A lot of times you don't even have to add solder to it. You can actually just uh, heat it up and it'll usually work for you. But let me take a closer look at this with my eyes. It kind of looks like somebody else may have messed with it. Not sure. That light bulb is burnt out. Looks like most of the light, light bulbs are burnt out, so I'm gonna have to go I'm gonna have to order some of these bulbs. We're not gonna have dash lights. 
All right, so what you want to do is come in here and heat these up. Now, I, I'm not sure if someone has already messed with this or not. Let me wipe this down a little bit. guys so all I did was heat up the uh, solder on the pins right here remelted it I didn't add any solder to it this time because I mean it really doesn't look like I need to add solder to it I might need to uh, but I'm going to uh, go plug this in and see if it works so let's get it put back together screws let's go reinstall this and see if it works now all right guys let's get this thing reinstalled see if I can manage this I think the hard part is actually getting the getting a hold of the plugs and getting them plugged in
got that one plugged in. Got that one plugged in. Now if I can just get a hold of this one. Get it plugged in. And now for the airlines. Buddy said it would be easy because <laughs> this is definitely not easy but it's really it's not that bad it just it's not you guys can do this all right now we need our 9 16 wrench we'll snug up our fittings here let me run this one down a little bit more by hand all right, then we can snug it down. All right. Let's put this in here. I'll deal with that later. Let's see if it works. Let's see. Here we go. Nothing. Okay, that didn't work. Um, hmm. Well, All right guys, so what I've been doing here is actually I've crossed over some of these to where they're supposed to go uh, instead of relying on that to go through uh, just the circuit board. Uh, so I've actually bridged these over to where they're going. Uh, you can read that by looking at the circuit board itself and seeing where that metal inside here goes. Um, so I've connected those and hopefully that fixes it. Somebody else has messed with this um, and it didn't look like they done a very good job. It looked like they just threw some solder on it thinking that was all it would need to fix it. But the in reality, what you got to do is actually make a connection uh, with that solder. Uh, so anyways, I removed the solder, put some more on there, uh, done it a little better by uh, actually bridging it over to where it should go. Some of these pins look like they're actually not used or they're just a ground. Uh, generally probably going to the lights um, so yeah I mean that's all I've really done this one right here looks like they messed with it so I heated it up uh, just remelted the solder now I'm going through and just looking at it really close to see if I can see any hairline fractures uh, in any of the solder joints anywhere on the circuit board <clears throat> and at the same time I'm also looking to see if there's any components on the back side uh, diodes or anything like that <clears throat> excuse me that are you know burnt looking or anything like that if they're showing signs of like being you know overheated or something uh, then that might be an issue that we would need to address but I haven't seen anything like that on here so I'm just kind of going through and looking to see if there's anything that looks like it might be a problem so anyways I'm gonna continue searching this over real close uh, and, and see if I see any issues. If I do, I'll let y'all know. Um, but then we're going to get this put back together. We're going to reinstall it and see if it works. All right. All right. 
I do not see anything else wrong with this. So I think now it's time for me to uh, put this back together and reinstall it. I'm really hoping uh, that just by bridging over, I know you guys probably can't see this, but uh, where the pin comes through from this plug, uh, they'll have corresponding things where you'll see the grid in here, the, uh, the copper or whatever inside the circuit board that where it goes to next or whatever. And a lot of times there could be like a little hairline fracture or something in that in the circuit board that can cause an issue. And if you can just bridge that solder over to that uh, corresponding connection. Now, some of these are gonna be right next to some that they're not supposed to be connected. So you gotta kind of watch out for that. But if, if you can see that there's copper, uh, you can look at the circuit board, I think, and you can see where the tracks go, you know. Uh, so if you can actually bridge that gap, uh, a lot of times what I've had to do in the past when I worked with my uh, stepdad, you know, fixing TVs and VCRs or camcorders, that's actually what got me into doing uh, video work years and years ago was uh, I had a camcorder and I used to do stop motion picture uh, films with Ninja Turtles and stuff like that as a kid. So I've always kind of been into doing video work and stuff. Uh, but this, the technology we have nowadays for editing video is just phenomenal. But uh, back to what I was talking about. One thing I used to do or have to do when there would be a, a, a messed up bridge or whatever in a circuit board, I would just use a wire and solder it in, say from here to wh wherever it needed to go and fix it that way. And that would save the customer a bunch of money so they didn't have to buy a whole nother circuit board, all that kind of stuff. But uh, there, there's options like that if that's what you're running into with yours, but you really got to go through it like with a fine tooth comb. I got to take my glasses off and get up there really close and look at things real close. I don't need a magnifying glass. I just got to take my glasses off because I'm very nearsighted so I can look at it like this. And it's very much like when I'm looking at it like this without my glasses, it's very much like looking at it with a magnifying glass, I guess or a microscope maybe. <laughs> so anyways, let's get this thing put back together. Fingers crossed that I done everything right and it works now. So here we go. All right, get our odometer. Uh, let's see, wrong way, goes this way. All right, plug goes to the outside, duh. All right, get the odometer plug run up through here. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Get all these pins lined up on here. Make sure all the gauges are plugged in to the circuit board. Okay, now we can start putting our screws back into it. Um, I got a light missing. Where did I take that light out of? Um, duh, 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 duh. I know it was on this board. Um, where, oh, right here. All right, now we can put the screws back in. Should be two screws up here at the top of this one here by the left turn and then one over here by the right turn this is where you would change your bulbs for your your left turn your right turn like here's your left turn bulb your indicator bulb I can't turn it let's see Basically, you can grab a hold of these typically by hand and you just twist it a quarter turn left and that's got your light bulb in it. And yeah, if I can, there, you just pull that light bulb out 
and it plugs into there so just like that right there that's how you replace them if you didn't know so there you go uh so yeah your your dash lights and everything that inside here that's what these little gray things are uh you're gonna need if you want to replace all of the bulbs you're gonna need one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four and then you should have some extras right here you can put eight extras right in, in these spots there's none in there and then depending on your vehicle uh, if you have gauges over in here, warning gauges or whatever, you got axle front temp, uh, all that kind of stuff. If you have those things, uh, then you're going to have one, two, three, four, five more uh, lights to replace. But I don't have all that stuff on here. So, anyways, let's get this put back together now. I'm really hoping that it works. That one pin right there just does not like to line up. Well, it's not just that one, it's a couple of them. Starting to think I need bifocals or something so I can see up, stuff up close. I'm always looking over my glasses. there at the top. All right, that's all the screws. Let's go get it installed and see if it works. All right, I put the, these uh, boards right here, up here on the windshields to block some of the sunlight out. So hopefully you guys can see. Let me turn on this light. All right, that might work. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get this. I think that board's kind of in my way now. It's not gonna let me move that over, I guess. There. Yeah, let me slide this back. Block some of that sunlight out so it's not washing out the picture. So y'all can see what we got going on here. I'm just gonna plug these in for now. I'm not gonna worry about the airline because I'm my battery on my GoPro is at 11%, so it's about to die on me. So we're just gonna see if it works. Oh, sorry, I'm getting in the way here. moment of truth guys let's see if the if it works here we go oh my gosh looky there I've got gauges guys look at that Woohoo! second time's a charm oh, 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 oh look at that oil pressures looking good water tempers at 140 or less we got over 50 psi probably pretty close to 60 psi I can see the voltmeter move a little bit all right I gotta shut it off all right I did not hook up these airlines back here so I got to get those hooked up to this air gauge right here let me see pull it out like so all right the green one goes on the right oh, keep a hold of it you might be able to put it out in there you just plug it in 
So you got that little uh, ferrule on there. You just kind of plug that in there. Get it plugged in like that. Get it seated. <clears throat> then put the little compression nut down on there. Finger tight for now. I'm excited, guys. Can you tell I'm all shaky? <laughs> Get this thing back up here. One thing you can do to keep this thing from going way back in the dash, you can actually put a piece of uh, tape or something around your air hose right here, and that'll keep it within reach for you. But anyways, let's get that plugged in. Get her done up here. Man, I'm so excited. I know some people were concerned that the, the gauges didn't work. Uh, left a couple comments or whatever on the video of when I was buying the bus and I didn't think it was too big of a deal I, I figured it was this issue so I done my research on these buses a little bit uh, before I bought it so I knew a little bit about what I was getting into all right get this other one in over here see if I can multitask here <laughs> apparently I can't I need to use two hands to run the screwdriver I don't know why they don't have a something up here at the top of this thing to hold these in place so they don't vibrate so bad that's why they have issues because of the vibration All right, so now we get this one here in. Oh, doggy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Here we go. We got gauges. Everything's working. I've got a fuel gauge now. That's awesome. Boy, it's windy out here. All right, guys, so I got to thinking, I was like, well, I know why it's not building air, why the needle's not going up. It's because I drained the tanks, I left the valves open. Check this out. There we go. Now I can build air pressure. Duh. <laughs> All right, let's go. Guys, you have no idea how happy I am that that fixed the issue. That's awesome. Check this out. It has cruise control. You set the idle up. There we go. Running about a thousand RPM. We can actually bump it down.
boat. Awesome guys, I'm sorry if I'm being too loud in here, but oh man, I am so excited. We have gauges on the bus. Woo! Man, I am so excited. Oh, I don't think I could be happier. <sighs> yeah, that right there, I was so worried that I was gonna be out a bunch of money to put like a, a sending unit in the fuel tank and you know, just all this other stuff. And I was like, man, I'm really hoping that is just like a soldering thing because we had a similar issue with an old Chrysler Town & Country. So if you guys got a, I think it's like probably a 99 Chrysler Town & Country, and let's say you put the key in and you go to start it up and it won't run, uh, like it'll start up and it'll shut off. And then like sometimes you'll maybe have, the horn will start honking, it'll think you're stealing it. Well, I'll tell you how to fix that. Go take the uh, instrument cluster out like we just did on this bus right here. And right there where it plugs in, you know, get that all apart right there and re-solder all those pins right there for where it plugs into that and that will fix it. That's the same thing we went through with our uh, Chrysler Town & Country. Uh, it was a limited edition. I don't know if that really matters or not. And I heard that a lot of Dodge Caravans do the same thing. So I figured that's what was wrong with this one when I bought it. I'd also done some research and I seen that this is a common known issue that happens with these internationals it's just a, a soldering issue on that circuit board so it's not a big deal whenever you look at an international like this an old 3800 this is a 2001 model uh, i think it went all the way to 2002 if i'm correct i hope i am uh, but they had the same kind of dash cluster in those they had them in international trucks and everything all the same uh, so it, it's a this is kind of an industrial like up here the chassis and everything's Pretty much the same as a semi truck right so anyways it's a pretty well known issue and i said well i'm hoping that's what it is and i'm hoping that you know when i fix that or you know mess with that it'll fix everything like it did uh but i'll tell you what my heart sunk into my stomach the first time around i soldered it and i put that thing in there and it didn't work i was like oh no oh no 
I'm gonna have to buy a, a dash cluster or I'm gonna have to go through all this wiring or I'm gonna have to you know buy a sending unit for the fuel tank and oh I, I was just I was sweating it then all right then the second time around I was like no this is what it's got to be it's what it's got to be I gotta you know let's do it again so I went through and I heat up the solder and I go and blow real hard and blow that solder off there which is kind of you know you may not want to do that because like I don't know if you can see this but on the back of the driver's seat look at that <laughs> we got solder on here it'll it'll flake off there it ain't no big deal it didn't burn in or nothing but yeah you don't want nobody around you might blow solder on them but uh so I like standing back here got that breeze coming through it's a little cooler from those windows being open right there um, but yeah second time around and it worked I tell you what when I was going down the road and the speedometer worked too had I not had a seat belt on I probably would have been jumping up and down out of my seat so anyways we got it fixed guys I hope that this video will help you out if you guys buy you an international bus or a, a dump truck or a semi truck or whatever uh, and your gauges aren't working hopefully this video will help you guys out guys i want to thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video if you did smash that thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time bye